Hey, welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Hope you're doing well. So in previous videos, I have spoken about the way in which specific types of watch movements work. And today I thought we would talk about the tourbillon movement. Um, this is incorporated into manual wind and, and automatic watch movements. Um, so if you haven't seen our, our videos where we describe the manual wind watch movement as well as the automatic wind watch movement, check out those videos. It'll be in um, our folder where, where we have our, our playlist where we have all of the types of watch movements where we explain them, but it'll also be in the description. So if you want to check that out while you're looking in the description, um, if you move just over to the right, you'll see a, uh, a little button that says like, make sure you like this video if you um, find it useful and also subscribe to our channel. It really does help us out. So back to the topic at hand, um, as I said, we've explained, we explained how a mechanical watch works, but for those of you who haven't seen those videos, just to sum up that quickly, um, what ends up happening in a watch is it's, it's comprised of a bunch of gears and levers that are put together in a specific way so that um, as energy is brought into the movement, either through winding the crown of the watch or the rotor spinning, um, the, that energy is transferred into a mainspring, which is unraveled. And as that mainspring ends up raveling up again, that energy is released into the, the components, moving the gears and eventually making its way to the, um, an oscillating balance wheel, which is what regulates the watch. Now, the problem that was faced um, with this uh, oscillating balance wheel is the effect on gravity that it has, the effect that gravity has on the balance wheel. Now, Depending on where which angle your wrist is, gravity can have di a different um, type of effect on the balance wheel. Um, because gravity is pulling it down, it can oftentimes um, cause the oscillating distance of the the the, uh, the balance wheel to differ, um, changing the speed at which it is oscillating. And the speed at which it oscillates is what regulates the watch and makes it keep time at a specific. Um, accuracy. So if that gravity is changing how it's spinning, the regulation of that um, the balance wheel is going down, causing the watch to be less accurate. So a bunch of watchmakers found this issue uh, to be true and ended up coming up with a tourbillon. A tourbillon actually means whirlwind in French, um, and it's explained it, it and whirl, whirlwind kind of makes sense being that if you look at how a tourbillon moves, it kind of looks like it's it's a, it's a gust of wind that's moving. So a tourbillon is, is basically just a cage that surrounds the uh, balance wheel um, and it rotates in 360 degrees um, on one axis, um, if it's a, a one axis rotation um, tourbillon, which reduces the effect of gravity on that specific uh, balance wheel. Now, the one that I'm speaking about is a one axis rotation, so it only rotates in 360 degrees uh, five degrees in the direction that the balance wheel oscillates. But there are other uh, tourbillons that, that have multi-axis um, rotations where it spins both in 360 degrees horizontally, but it also um, spins um, vertically as well. So um, you'll have this really cool uh, spinning motion that this tourbillon goes through. So a little bit of history about the tourbillon. It comes from about the it comes for it was first brought up in around the late 1700s um, where they kind of realized this issue that gravity had on the balance wheel it was patent the tourbillon design was patented by abraham louis Breguet um, in 1975 and 1901 when an improvement was made on it and this really stemmed the whole uh, watch world creating um, the tourbillon and incorporating it into their movements to increase the accuracy of them um, now, tourbillons, because of the intricacy of uh, creating the cage as well as assembling it in, in, into these uh, very um, complicated watches, they are considered relatively expensive. However, there is cheap versions that you can get for them. Um, my personal recommendation, if you're trying to get an entry-level tourbillon, I would look at the Tag Heuer Carrera. It's called the Tête de, uh, Tête de Vipere. <laughs> Tête de Vipere. Uh, chronograph, this is um, a tourbillon movement, um, but it's also a chronom chronometer certified movement. It's their one of their in-house, Tucker is one of their uh, uh, in-house movements under the um, helm of Jean-Claude Beaver, who really steered Tucker in, in the great direction. It was the Carrera Hoyer 02T in-house movement. It's a, it's a chronograph movement with a tourbillon chronometer certified, so it's it's got, packs a lot of punch for, for such a 
for such a great, uh, for such a complicated piece. And it was released in 2016, and they retailed for about 15,950 US dollars. So you're looking at a substantial amount of money. However, um, again, it's a Turbion Chronometer Certified in-house movement from Tag Heuer, and it, it has a really cool design. I'll make sure to put up some pictures. Um, but as I said, Turbions are relatively expensive. Um, they can go for hundreds or even thousands of dollars, and even into the millions when you're looking at um, if you're adding a Turbion complication to other types of complications within watches. I think the what really stands out is it's just a beautiful complication to have in a watch. If you've ever um, been, had the chance to see a Turbion uh, move, it's something that um, really captures your eye and captures your imagination. I think almost creates a really cool bond that you have with your watch because to see that um, Turbion cage move, and if you have a, a, um, a, a bi-directional or a multi-axis Turbion where it's spinning in multiple directions, it's a really beautiful thing to see. So I hope that explains how Turbion works. If you've made it this far, make sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Comment below what you think about the Turbion complication. Do you think it's unnecessary to have? Do you think it's outdated? Um, if you own a, a Turbion, tell me what, what type of Turbion you own or what you're looking at uh, perhaps buying. We'd love to, to, to hear that. And I hope you guys have a nice rest of your day.